everyone. Welcome back to Live Chat with me, Karima. I just had my uh, heart ablation done about a week ago. I'm actually still recovering at home. Uh, I have uh, some soreness in my groin area and my chest area still. But I wanted to just take a moment and share my experience with you. Maybe you're contemplating and getting an ablation done because you're suffering from SVT like I did, tachycardia or AFib or, or whatever. And um, I just thought that it would be good for me to share what I went through and you know certain things that I've learned uh, through the procedure and hopefully will help you make a better decision for yourself. I hope you will enjoy this video and if you do, please give it a thumbs up and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. There's a lot of great information things um, on there as well. And also just share this video with someone that you know may be experiencing tachycardia. It may help them um, you know, learn more about the procedure and hopefully make a decision for themselves as well. So before I tell you about the procedure, I just want to tell you a quick story about how I started having tachycardia. I started in my 20s. Um, I just came out of nowhere. I was at work and next thing I know I was in the hospital. They actually had to stop my heart and restart it because it wouldn't slow down. Uh, took probably about another five years or so before I saw another tachycardia attack. Um, I just had opened my business at the time. I had a hair salon and I was under a lot of anxiety from, from the business and uh, I had a tachycardia attack then. And then um, I had a couple when I was pregnant as well, but I would have them like maybe once every two years or so. It wasn't all the time until I uh, got breast implants, um, silicone breast implants put in, then I saw, you know, an, in, an increase in my tachycardia attacks. And what I didn't know at the time was when I got my second set, which was silicone, I had the ruptured implant inside my body and that was triggering a lot of my tachycardia. Now, it wasn't the cause of my tachycardia. Obviously, I was born with this issue but certain things trigger it like stress or anxiety or, uh, or excitement, you know, a lot of excitement, uh, and, and, or caffeine, you know, things like that. But, but I noticed like I had a, a lot of, of them, uh, when I had the implant ruptured inside my body, I actually took them out about three years ago, but I still have some of the toxins left. So I'm still having tachycardia from that over and over again. And it came to the point where it would just show up out of nowhere. You know, I would be on vacation or I would be, you know, sleeping and it would, it would, it would come on. And it was just really scary uh, because when it did come on, it would last from five minutes up to 15 hours. And when it lasts a long time, it's very scary. I mean, you know, you can have, you know, you can have a, a, a cardiac arrest from it or, you know, and I, even though I, I'm, I'm young, you know, I'm in my 40s, it's still possible, you know, to have complication from, you know, over time of having so many tachycardia attacks. And so I had to make the decision for myself to get the ablation. I was on medication. They gave me metropolol, which is a better blocker. And um, I would take it only when I would, you know, have a, an episode. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. I just didn't want to be on medication for the rest of my life. So I went ahead and just signed up to get the procedure done. Um, so the procedure um, information, I, I went to my surgeon, you know, obviously we talked about having it and uh, he said, I'll have my nurse call you. She called me, set up the appointment. Um, and then she sent me an email with a couple papers for uh, pre-op and post-op information. And I was asked not to eat anything after midnight, uh, not to drink anything after midnight. There was no pre-op as far as like blood testing and all that stuff. There's nothing like that. You just, they set you up and you show up the day of, which I was very surprised because um, my prior surgeries have always had a pre-op, you know, a day or two before, but not this, you know, you just show up the day of and they do everything on the same day. So I was asked not to eat or drink anything, which I did. And then um, if you take any kind of heart medication, they, they want you to stop three days before uh, the procedure. They also, I noticed that on some of the videos I watched, they said that they, they were gonna shave the area for you before the procedure. I just went ahead and took care of that. I didn't want them to shave me. So I was like, I mean, I'm just gonna do it myself. So I did. I also took, um, 
uh, just a little bag with, with like an extra pair of underwear, uh, travel to brush tooth paste and some wipes, uh, some face uh, uh, cleaning wipes as well. Just in case I ended up spending the night or something, I wanted to have a couple things with me. They don't really ask you to bring all that stuff, but I brought it with me, which is very small. And um, uh, the next morning when I woke up, I went ahead and just rinsed off, you know, just so I'm, I'm nice and fresh and my hair was clean and things like that. And then uh, we showed up at the hospital with my husband. I was not asked to take a COVID test or anything like that. They only wanted me to wear a mask and they tested my fever, uh, my husband and I, as we were coming in to the hospital. That's it. And uh, I did not take any valuables with me. I left all my jewelry at home. I only took my driver license and my insurance card. That's all I took with me because I didn't want, you know, you don't need to take anything like that with you. Just keep that stuff at home. And um, when we got there, he said, okay, you need to get registered. So we went in with this lady, got registered. She took my information and then she told my husband, okay, you can go over here and we'll call you when she's ready. And so they took me back. Uh, they put me in this room. Uh, they had a, I had a gown ready and some socks ready and things like that. And so she told me to go ahead and change. I had my own room, which was cool. I had a TV, a uh, bathroom and everything. And so I went ahead and changed into my gown, sat down on the bed and then they came in and they wanted to go ahead and get some blood to get it tested, I guess, before the procedure. So she went in and she couldn't get any blood. So she went ahead and just kept that area for uh, the IV. Then she went into my right arm and um, tried to get blood there, couldn't get it. Second time, got a third area, still couldn't get the blood out. She was like, man, you are, you're, blood, you're stingy with your blood, you know? I said, well, if you let me drink some fluid, I probably will have some veins popping up this morning, you know? I was dehydrated because I haven't had anything to drink. So finally, another lady came in and she poked me for the fourth time and finally got it done and, and got the blood out that they needed. And after that, they pretty much just left me alone. And, you know, they're like, okay, just relax, watch some TV, get on your phone, do whatever, we'll be back. And um, they went ahead and got my husband. Uh, I was allowed to have one person with me during the procedure. And uh, so he came and had relaxed and hang out with me for a little while until they came back and got me. The doctor comes in, kind of tells me a bit about the procedure, you know, that it's gonna happen soon. Someone is gonna come and get me soon. And uh, so this guy comes in and um, he takes me back. And while he's taking me over there, I said, I'm not gonna feel anything, am I? He said, well, sometime you might feel a little bit of heartburn because you know, they're going up, you know, through your tummy and going up to your heart. And um, he said, also, you may feel a little bit of movement with your heart because they're going to have to put you in a tachycardia mode in order to see what the problem is. And I was thinking, oh, no, I do not want to feel anything. Please, Lord, don't let me feel anything. So but when I, I, we went in and uh, he took me off the bed, put me on another bed, and he said, okay, just go ahead and stay setting up. This room was huge. I've never seen a room this big before, but there was TVs everywhere. There was this huge TV on top of me. Um, this huge uh, machines, they were like, I think they were like ultrasound machines, people everywhere to get in, everything set up, a uh, bunch of wires all over the place. And uh, it was very intimidating. I was like, whoa, this is, this is pretty, uh, pretty cool, but also pretty scary. But uh, they, everybody was really nice, really, you know, really funny, trying to make you feel comfortable. And uh, the only thing that wasn't comfortable was they were they were putting these patches um, on my back and they were probably, I mean, they were huge. It was probably six by six inch or something like that. And they were freezing cold. They were the same kind of patches they put in when they do an AKG. Um, but instead of being tiny, tiny little circles, they're like huge uh, squares. They had four on my back, uh, one on my side and two on my legs. And then they had me laying down and uh, I couldn't really see what was going on after that because my head was straight up and I couldn't see, but they covered me up a little bit to get warm and they, you know, just talked to me and things like that. And then this lady comes and she goes, okay, I'm about to put some medicine in your IV because to that point they haven't given me anything, which I was very surprised. I was like, I'm anxious about this. You know, I can't believe they haven't given me anything. So they, they haven't given me uh, you know, any kind of sedation until I got in into the procedure room. And that's when she went ahead and put it in. And as soon as she put it in, I was gone. I don't remember anything 
until I woke up in my room after the procedure. And when I woke up, I saw my husband and, and, and he's like, it's over, honey, you're done. And I'm like, what? What do you mean I'm done? I just start, get started, you know? But uh, it, went, it went by pretty fast. The procedure lasted about an hour. There's like a 20 minutes preparation where they have to, you know, do all kinds of stuff. Um, and then maybe test your blood, I guess, and things like that. But, um, but after that, really, the procedure is pretty quick, you know, once they go in and they know where the problem is. Uh, the doctor came in, he's like, it went great, uh, you, your wife did really good, uh, you know, this is going to be a 98% success to this uh, procedure. Uh, she shouldn't have any more tachycardia. The only thing is she may feel some flutters in her heart once in a while, but it should never go to tachycardia. You know, and so he was very positive about this procedure, and I was really excited to hear that after the fact when I got off my from my sedation. But um, so I was laying there, and I had to be in a recovery room for about three to four hours. They came in, gave me some crackers, ginger ale. Then she comes with this platter of food with pasta. It was Alfredo pasta and some vegetables. And I just, I was hungry because I haven't eaten since midnight. So I was just eating, eating away, you know. And all of a sudden, you know, I started getting some pain a little bit on the side. And I said, well, can I please have something for the pain? Because I'm it's waking up and it's hurting, you know, in my groin area. Because they go up your groin area with the tubes. And then they go up to your heart to do the procedure and pull them out from that, that area. And it's very small. I mean, the little spots are very, very tiny, super tiny. So I said, would you please give me something for the pain? And so she gave me some Tylenol. Well, that didn't do anything. It didn't even touch the pain. And I said, I am still in pain. Can I have something else? So she gave me Tramadol. She gave me like a very low dose of Tramadol, which I, it doesn't usually agree with me. And I started, my head started to spin. And I, and I knew it was probably from, you know, the anesthesia and all that stuff that I had. But uh, they were ready to, you know, let me go home. And I was just thinking, this is not going to be good. So I asked her, I said, would you please give me a bag in, in case I have to vomit? Because I feel like something is coming. And so she gave me a bag. I get discharged and uh, put my clothes on and all that stuff. And uh, the pain when it was in bed in my, in my chest, I just had a little bit of soreness in my side, mo most, mostly. And... My husband puts me in the car, we start driving, and it just hit me. And I had to throw up so bad, so bad. I said, please, please, you're gonna have to stop. You're gonna have to stop, you know? And he finally stopped at this checkers um, uh, parking lot. And thank God I had that thing in my hand ready to go. And it just all came out. Whatever I ate, whatever I drank, just came right out. It was awful. My blood pressure started coming down. I started getting cold. My body was hurting. My, my poor husband didn't know what to do. He was sitting there next to me. He's like, what do I do? What do I do? You want me to take you back to the hospital? What do I do? I'm like, no, just stay. Just stay. Just give me. Just don't move. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't move. Because he was trying to, you know, he's like, it's going to be okay. I'm like, no, please don't touch me. Don't, you don't understand. I am so dizzy right now. And everything came out. And thankfully, about five to ten minutes into this craziness, it finally stopped. And I settled down a little bit. And I said, just take me home as fast as you can. Just take me home. And my mistake that I did was because I was hungry, I ate too fast. So don't make the same mistake I did. Just have a little bit of crackers and a little bit of ginger ale, but don't overdo it. I think I had like two or three ginger ales. And I mean, I was just going to town because I was hungry. So don't make the same mistake I did. And they really should have never given me food. You know, they should have just given me crackers and said, hey, don't eat that much. I guess because it's not a big procedure, they think it's, it's okay, but it's not. Take, I'm telling you, take it easy. Don't make the same mistake I did, please. So I finally got home. I was white as I don't know what. I mean, I'm, I'm a dark woman, so for me to be white, it takes a lot. <laughs> but I got home, my husband laid me down, and then I started taking some crackers again, a little bit of ginger ale, trying to stop the nausea. Took some Zofran, and literally an hour later bam came all out again and by that time i was just exhausted and i just passed out of sleep and um the next day i woke up i felt a little bit better thankfully the nausea went away you know with the so it kind of helped and uh, my husband came in gave me you know he's, he's like we're gonna take it easy this morning 
So he gave me some toast with some butter and jelly only and a little bit of coffee. And uh, so we just took it easy the first day. And I spent most of my day in bed, literally just all in bed. Just I will doze off and, and just fall asleep and wake up and doze off and go to sleep. I was just tired, you know, from what happened to me the night before. My sister-in-law came to help with the kids and stuff. And so she was here, thankfully, uh, this week helping me out with my kids going to, back to school and things like that. But what I did is really the first day, I just took it easy. I think I, I had some grits for lunch um, and I just took it easy. I didn't overeat. I, I just drank a lot of fluids to kind of get back, get my body back to normal. The next day, I spent about half a day in bed again, took it easy. And then it was Sunday, so I wanted to do church. So we did church online and I got up and got on the couch and I just sat on the couch for the rest of the day because I didn't want to be in bed all day. Um, and then as... The, the days go by, you know, uh, I got a little bit better, a little bit stronger. I never really had extreme pain, but I was just tired. It takes a little bit of time to get back to normal, you know. Um, I did have some pain in my groin. Sometimes I had the pain in my groin, sometimes I had the pain in my chest. Sometimes both, sometimes just one, sometimes, you know. Um, they just want you to uh, take a shower uh, when you get home or whenever you're ready. I didn't take a shower the next day because I was so exhausted. I took it the day after. I took it Sunday um, because I was just, I was, I was like, I am not going to try to take a shower today. So I just took it set, a Sunday morning. I got up and I went in and I took a shower. I took the, the big thing bandage off that they put on uh, in the area where they opened. And I was supposed to take a shower with that, then take it off and put a bandaid on it. And I did exactly what they said. So Anyway, it's been a week. Uh, I feel a little bit better today, um, definitely compared to what I did. But the, you know, the, the main thing is, you know, I think this is really going to be good, um, and I can't wait not to have any more of these tachycardia attacks. I mean, I just can't wait because it will be a life changing for me. Uh, it was a really uh, bad thing that I've been through for years, and I can't wait for it to stop. So. I will update. I have uh, an appointment next week for uh, my uh, post-op appointment with the surgeon to just kind of get some more information about how the procedure went and things like that and how I'm doing. I will probably uh, do another video and give you guys some more information. I hope that this was uh, helpful to you, uh, uh, you know, to any of you if you're contemplating and getting this procedure done. If you have any questions, please uh, put them in the uh, comment section below and I'll be happy to answer any question you may have. Thank you so much for watching. Blessings to all and much love.